Now this is AK Interactive's Still Water. Now this is a clear acrylic based liquid that is designed to create realistic water effects. Well today we're going to put it through its paces. We're going to put it through a bunch of different tests to with different variables to see how it actually performs and how you get the most out of it. More to the point, is there different techniques and things that you definitely want to avoid? If you are thinking of getting hold of some of this stuff for use on one of your projects, then you're going to want to watch all the way through to the very end. Because some of the tests that we put this stuff through, they did not come out the way I was expecting at all. On the flip side, if you have used this stuff before and you are used to playing around with it, then let me know down in the comments if your findings matched what we had here. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So, let's go. Now this stuff is from the AK Interactive's diorama range. And you may remember that a while back we tested out the AK Interactive Swamp Gel, also from the diorama range. Now this stuff is a almost like a paint type consistency, whereas this stuff I can see through the bottle itself is much more of a liquid. Now previously we figured out how this stuff kind of works best. Now whilst I'm not going to do a direct one-to-one -one comparison today, but it would be logical that coming from the same range that they could behave in a similar sort of fashion. Well, let's find out. So as you can see, this one is brand new. I've not even cut the top off this yet. So let's put it through its paces. Okay, so the way we're gonna test this first of all is I've got some of these small blue lids that come from a milk carton. So nice and small, comparatively deep, so we can test it what it's like in, in deeper layers, but also nice and equal and easy to compare like for like. Now, first of all, I wanna test it as it is, and because it's an acrylic, you can water it down, so I'm gonna test it in that one, and also I wanna try and test it out with some color. So that's what that one's for. But on top of that, I want to see how it handles in a more realistic modeling setting. So I want to test it to see how it flows against like uh, the banks of a riverbank or in a puddle or something like that. So to test this, I'm going to create a small riverbank top effect, a gradient for the water to kind of flow against so we can see how it behaves in that way as well. Now to do this, I'm going to create that out of Milliput, also to make it more interesting and also more realistic for, a, for the scenarios we're going to use it in. I'm gonna kind of rough the surface up a little bit and we can test it, see how it works against that rough kind of surface. So there we go. And in the best traditions of this sort of thing, here's some more I made earlier. So what I'm gonna do first is prime them. And for this, I'm gonna use a gray mecha primer from Vallejo. Okay, so that primer is now dry and it's looking pretty good. So therefore, I wanna see how it looks over different colors. So therefore, I'm gonna paint each of these three different colors. Three test pieces, pretty much the same, or at least comparable. Gonna let that dry and then we'll start playing with the still water. So, lid one. Now this one is gonna be the gel in neat, uncolored, just basically placed in and see how it reacts. The second one is gonna be the same gel, but I'm gonna slightly dilute it and see how that kind of reacts and see if it react changes or reacts any differently. Once again, that's gonna be uncolored. So on these two, I'm interested in how it flows and how it self levels when I pour it in. Also, if it shrinks when it dries, and how transparent it is against the three colors we've got here. And if the dilution makes any difference to that transparency. But also what I'm looking for, I'm trying to get a realistic effect. But also with a lot of these water effects, it kind of sticks the edge slightly as it kind of goes in. So therefore it kind of dries in an quite unrealistic, concave sort of uh, effect. So first of all, test one. So this is the AK Interactive Still Water. As you can see, it's a brand new bottle. It's not even been opened yet. So first of all, to open it, all you need to do is just snip off the tip there. And I've got your nozzle there. Of course, once you finish with it, it stuff does dry on contact with air. So make sure, make sure, so make sure that when you finish with it, that nozzle is covered up with a cap like that. Okay, so this first test is gonna be doing it neat. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to start off in the deepest part of it. Okay. And as it goes in, it's got a slight, slightly milky consistency. Got the bubbles there, which I don't really want, but. Now, since when you're using this stuff, to put it in no deeper than three mil. So it shouldn't be a problem in this scenario. 
Okay, so the next test is gonna be with it slightly watered down. So I've got a milk carton here. Now I've used this to mix paint in previously, but it's all washed out and it's clean. So I'm gonna squidge a bit. So I'm gonna squeeze a bit of the clear water in there. And then I'm going to just add some clean tap water in there. Well, that's a roughly, about, roughly about a 50-50 mix. I'll give it a stir. Now this has now gone slightly milky. So this will be interesting, but there's a lot less bubbles in it. It's a lot runnier as you would expect from the original neat stuff. So gently pour that in there, like that. Roughly the same amount as the other stuff. It seems to have found the its level a lot easier, and, and there is no bubbles in there whatsoever. So let's gently move that across to there. Now the third test, I wanna try it tinted, so kind of a bit more like a river water. So on this one, I'm gonna get the, so I've rinsed out the, the mixing cup. So to tint the water, a bit of a riverish type green. I'm gonna add a little bit of the camouflage dark green from Vallejo Model Air. This is quite a thin paint, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's leave those three overnight and see how they dry out. Right, okay, so I've now been at work today, I've come home, so it's now the following evening, and Let's have a quick look at these. So this is the one which is put in neat. Now this one this morning, like an absolute idiot, I tried to poke it to see how dry it was. It wasn't dry. So it had skimmed over and I managed to put my finger straight through it. Uh, this one is the one that's diluted and that is still, it's starting to skim over a bit, but that's still very, very, very fluid. So this is the one that was neat, but we put that drop of paint into it. It's very similar to the other one. It's uh, starting to skim over now, but it's still drying very, very slowly. And just now I gently poked it to see how dry it was, and it's still very, very tacky, it kind of raised up a little bit. Now it says in the bottle you can put it up to three mil thick, and neat, it's kind of getting there. It's taking a long time to dry, but it is getting there. With the one that I diluted down, that is still very, very, very runny. So I think we're gonna put that to one side for now, and leave that and just leave it alone and see what happens with that. Now the bottle says that you can apply it up to three mil, but if you want any more depth, then you put it in and build it up in layers. But we're saying there, a couple of mil and it takes forever to dry. Therefore, I want to test it out and see if you can get a result and it dries faster by doing several very, very thin layers. So therefore, I made another one. So this one, exactly the same as the others, but this time I'm gonna try and put it in very, very thin layers. So this one, I'm gonna put in just enough of the gel so it covers the bottom. Okay, so that's had a few hours to dry, and that's, yeah, that's looking good. So let's try again the next layer. Okay, so they've now dried, let's see what we've got. Let's move these out of the way. Now this is the one that I put in neat. So quite a thick layer, not more than three mil, but it's still a thick layer all in one go. Now it did dry comparatively quickly, well, just over about just over a day it took to completely dry, even though it was a thick layer. So what is interesting is that it's not really sucked back, it's not really shrunken from the from the edges from where it first settled and where it first went in. But what is interesting though is that A, some of these bubbles here are still in situ there. The ones we didn't, didn't quite get rid of, we thought we'd leave there to see how it went. So it's quite difficult to show you how it's actually dried on camera. So Let's bring in the whiteboard. Okay, so let's say this is the bottle top that we used in the example, and that is the kind of gradient in the uh, in the putty that we put in. Now, so first of all, we did it neat. Okay, so we used it straight in, and didn't thin it down at all, and we put it in. We put about a two mil layer in like that. Now, initially, it kind of lapped up to it quite nicely, it didn't kind of suck up and then drag back down again. But this took ages to dry. Um, I left it overnight, I was expecting it to be dry, completely very similar to the swamp goo stuff that we tested before. But it was, um, what had actually happened was that it actually, I initially thought it was dry, but it formed like a skin, like that. And then when I put my finger in, like that, 
kind of obviously stuck to my finger. And I think what actually happened was that that when I put my finger back out again, it kind of came up like that. And then when it came loose from my finger, it kind of collapsed back in itself like that. And I expected it to sort of uh, to reset and to re self level, but it didn't. It's dried, it dried and left a kind of literally a dip in it like that. So then I tried to repair it by pouring it neat straight into the hole. So, yes, that kind of filled it up, but I poured it slightly proud of it. But what rather than leveling out over this, it kind of left like a slightly convex sort of surface like that. So, you've got a nice flat part here, and then literally a dome. Of the uh, of the stuff in the middle, which is not exactly what you're really looking for, but was also what was interesting. What it did do, it went up like that, and then followed that curve slightly like that. So rather than leveling out, so you got like a lump in the middle with a little dimple in the uh, in the center there. So that was interesting. That didn't behave at all like I was expecting it. So it says that you can pour it in up to three millimeters. I wouldn't do that at all if I was you. Uh, if you do, then do not touch it and then leave it forever because um, it's going to take forever to dry. So the next one we tried to dilute it slightly. And the first one I did, I diluted it far too much and it just didn't dry at all. It was still liquid, even a day or two later. So I kind of scooped it out and I tried that again, but with a, a, lot, uh, a lot less diluted. And this time what was interesting, what it did, and I put a, put a single depth in there so once again about two mil deep now this dried a lot quicker but what it did instead is it kind of this kind of sank and kind of collapsed down a little bit so what so rather than staying dry like that what it ended up looking like was that now once again that's not what I expected so what it appears to be if you thin it it kind of shrinks a lot more but also it appears to follow the, the contour of the surface it's on rather than just flowing downhill. So this could be interesting, could be very helpful if you're doing like a diorama with like a waterfall or a river going down, uh, or a river going down a valley, for example. So once again, not what I was expecting, but it was worth checking that one out and seeing how it performed. We tried another one, neat, but painted. And once again, we did a quite thick-ish layer. And once again, it, once again, it, it formed the skin, and I left it a bit longer this time, so it was a bit thicker. And once again, I touched it, and yeah, I touched it to see if it was dry. And it's still crazy, it still collapsed a bit, but not as much. So I still end up with a dip like that. However, the coloration effect on it was really good, it looked really quite nice. So what this test shows is that yes, you can uh, tint it, you can put whatever coloration you look into it, and it will look really very effective, but it's very much how you then apply it uh, to then to get a good result. So it's very much the depth it seems to be the biggest variable here that you need to be aware of. So what I did then, rub that out, that completely went horribly wrong, so I literally dug it out. And if you're careful, you can peel it off and peel it away from the surface that is on without damaging it too badly. So what I then did was ignoring the two, three mil rule and put tiny little layers. Now, literally less than a mil, put in there like that. And it dried really nicely within an hour or two. And then put another layer in. And then once again, left it for a couple of hours. And then once again, left it for a couple of hours. And then did it again and again and again. Well, and to be honest with you, it dried quicker than the deep stuff, but it came with a really nice effect. And this is the result once it's dry. So yeah, that's looking actually pretty good. It hasn't really shrunk. There's no sort of uh, concave sucking back from the edges. There's no bubbles in this one. And also it's self-leveled really nicely. But also what is really interesting and totally actually unexpected in between the layers, either the deep parts hadn't quite set before I put the next layer in, or there was a little bit of uh, dust, for example, also, I think there might be a little bit of uh, dog hair in there as well. Is that you? Yeah. Is it time for a walk? You do realise it's absolutely pouring down a rain outside. Yeah? Okay, okay, fine. So before I go and sort that out, that little bit of dust or 
matter in between the layers actually works out really nicely. It kind of looks like, like particles suspended in the water. Okay, so in conclusion, the biggest thing you need to avoid is doing it in any sort of depth. Therefore, you're going to want to build it up to either sort of half a mil or a millimeter at a time. It does self-level pretty well, but that can be improved with just a little dash of water. Not very much, don't dilute it down, but just a little dash will help to improve that flow. And yes, you can add uh, paint to it, for example, to help tint it, or even other bits of dirt, dirt or dust to make that suspended matter in the water. Now, I don't know about you, but my brain is buzzing with loads of different ideas. So if you've got any thoughts, then let me know down in the comments and I may well add it to the next video. As always, if you want to check out the most up-to-date prices, then I've put some links down in the description for you. And uh, I'll best go take the dog for a walk. I'll see you later.